Good morning, everybody. Mike Brailsford with Brailsford Works. Thank you for joining me back. I'm trying it again one more time. I'm going to make blanket chest. Um, this one is a wedding present for a nephew that's getting married uh, next week. And uh, it's high time I get it finished. I've got all the panels already glued up. And uh, at this point, it's going to come down to um, cutting them into dimensions sanding them down and getting it all glued up and uh, there's more to it than that but that's the essence and so let's get on with it Okay, so the first thing I got my slabs, I've got them all sanded, uh, rough sanded to where I need them to be. And I am now going to dimension these to where I need them to be. Um, I'm going to first cut them to width, which I'm going to make them 16, maybe just a, just a hair shy, 15 and 15 16 probably. And then, <clears throat> so I'm going to do the two side, the the two short sides and the two long sides, and um, and then I will work on cutting them to length. But first, let's get the width. <laughs> So I cut them, made them square on one end. Now I want to cut them to the finished length. I'm going to do the two long sides. And I'm going to do those to, uh, I'm going to do them to 36 inches. <laughs> Okay, so I got my Lee D4 jig set up. I've had this thing for, oh gosh, probably 25 years. Um, I, I love it. Uh, I've used it quite a bit. It's, uh, it makes great dovetails. It's easy to set up. And um, it's just a nice tool. Um, so <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is the first thing you do is you route out the tails. And that's what I'm doing. So here we go.
All right, so it's time to start doing some assembly. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue up my dovetails. And my go-to glue for I use for everything is Type Bond 3. I start started using it when I was making when I ma when I started making cutting boards because it's waterproof. And um, I've just found that it's a it, the glue works great, and so I stick with it for well, about everything. So, so I'm just going to glue my dovetail pins. I got a little glue brush I'm using. I put my spill before I drop my. piece into it and make a mess and let's see this is the inside it does make a difference even though they you know on the tails it looks the same both front and back it does make a difference because the pins are adjustable that you put the right side <laughs> in the right to go into the outside there we go So something else I do is I also uh, pin my dovetail after I get it all assembled. I'll drill a hole in here and I'll drive a dowel in. And I'll do that in the four on the top and the four on the bottom. towards having a finished chest now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue a frame on the inside that'll be about an inch and a half, maybe a little less, and it'll have a rabbit cut in underneath it. And then I'm going to take this last big panel that I have, and I'm going to cut it so that it'll fit as a raised panel inside of that. Then from underneath where I have the rabbit cut, I'll attach another framework going around to hold the the raised panel in place um, I've done that several times before and it's worked really good and then what I will do is right here in the middle of this tail piece I that that'll be the area where I'm actually going to cut the top off of the box I think those make uh, they make better tops like that it gives a, uh, a frame around the outside of the of the top and makes it easier to 
easier to work with, I think, and I think it looks better also. So, let's get started on that frame that's going in up here. All right, let's cut the rabbit. I have my D-handled router already set up with the rabbiting bit. <laughs> So I've cut my first piece of the framework on top and I've got it mitered and it fits perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'll immediately glue this and get this clamped in and that makes it easier to work my way around the circle. I'm not worried about this squeeze out Oops. because when I do my final sanding, that'll come right off. I'm ready to put in the support for the bottom and what I do for a bottom is I use quarter inch plywood with a quarter inch of strips of uh, red cedar aromatic red cedar over that and uh, so I that that's not obviously not a stout enough bottom so what I do is I put in ribs that go all there I use um, a set of four ribs one two three four and uh, with a a border all the way around it so i can shoot down the uh the bottom into it with um with brads so what i do with these is i will mount them in and i shoot it in with quarter inch brad with a inch and a quarter brad and uh and i just move across and i'll i'll do that in time lapse so here we go So I'm ready to start cutting the cove on the side of the raised panel to create the raised panel. I've got my half inch radius cove bit <clears throat> on my D-handled router and uh, so let's get it. So I like to climb cut when I'm doing these, which means... Uh, not pushing against the bit, letting them running with the bit, <clears throat> and because uh, it gives a, a smoother cut, but you got to keep uh, strong hands on the router because it will want to. <laughs> Honestly, as a rule, I messed up my first cut. Not that there's a problem with the cut, but 
you should do the end grain first and then do the, the long grain. <laughs> So, you might say, that's a pitifully small amount. There's no way that you're going to do that whole top with this. Not only am I going to do this whole top with this, I might be able to get the other top as well. This stuff, I, I, I tell you, when you use it, you, it just boggles my mind. It just keeps going and going and going. But at any rate, I'm going to thoroughly mix it. And then you squeegee it on. That's the way this stuff is applied. I know a few of you are incredulous that those few drops I put on there was able to do this entire top. And believe it or not, there is some excess. Time has come to cut the top off. There it is, it's my cedar bottom. And out of all the ones I put in, they really, they really work well. They, they smell delightful even after years and years. Um, so. so on all the chests I make, I always use the same hinges. They work great. They're a surface mount. They're Amarok. And uh, I just like the way they go on. They go in nice and easy. All right, so I am going to mount my paracord handles. And in this particular case, because of the way the design is up here, I'm going to drill it up a little higher. And I'm just going to take the nuts off of here, and I'm going to epoxy them straight into the holes, and they won't go anywhere. So... Let's find my measurements and drill the holes. Okay, so I'm all done with my two blanket chests. They're both gifts for nephews who one who got married already and one's getting married in a week and a half. And I'll show you the handles that I wove out of paracord. It's white It's quarter sawn white oak both of them. I've got my raised panel in here. The 
I got my hold opens that I put in, my Amarok hinges, and my cedar bottom. These hold opens actually work quite well. Take a look at the other one. This one's got blue and black. Again, Amarok hinges. The recessed panel. Actually, they're also dovetailed through dovetails. And these I did a, a little detail on the corner. <clears throat> this one's got Babinga. And the other one's got maple. Same hold opens, the same hinges, and the cedar bottom. I'm very pleased with these. And we'll finally get them delivered. All right, if you have think you've gotten anything out of this video, please click like and subscribe. Also, please leave me some comments. I'll answer every single one. And as always, everybody, please stay safe. Everyone have a good day. Bye-bye.